Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, January 7th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Links, episode number uh, uh, 724. And uh, it is the 18th week, week of American football. Okay. Which means it's the last regular season week. I feel like these are random factoids, but I know that there's a relevancy. I think I think I know what you're talking about. Right? There is a relevancy. It doesn't have anything to do with my shirt. That's just a coincidence. Oh. Cool. I couldn't see the shirt from in your little tiny box right that I have right now. But anyway, <laughs> that being said. But it also is a new month and a new year, eh, which means we do one of the deep. Hold on. I'm having technical difficulties. Oh, no. Let's try again. <laughs> now, that was a for me because for some reason the, the audio muted on mine. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I also think for the the stream because what I hear is anyways moving on it, it sounded weird on the stream that's okay it's a good thing you redid it um last month had two things one was my return to wow part of it mm. was the announcement of the war within the next wow expansion uh -huh. also midnight following wow expansion and then the last titan which is three basically they announced three expansions at the last blizzcon also daddy metzen i mean chris metzen was the one who announced it and uh, he has a steve jobs esque effect to all blizzard fans And then one of them, the streamers I watch, um, Grinding Gear, they start playing like WoW Season of Discovery. And then I keep hearing people talk about what's coming up and WoW and I get all excited. And now I'm back into WoW. What does that mean? Well, for my last paycheck, I paid for a year subscription to WoW. <laughs> Am I canceling my Final Fantasy subscription? No. <laughs> Because I'm going to have my ups and downs. Speaking of which, on the 16th, both. Next patch for WoW and next patch for Final Fantasy XIV. Wow. However, the next patch of Final Fantasy XIV is a 24-hour maintenance, which means at the time... I probably won't be able to play Final Fantasy, so I'll just play the WoW one. So I've got both pieces covered. Next day, play the Final Fantasy. 
or later that date. Because usually it's one of those things where it's like from 11 p.m. the night before. Mm. So In addition, this last month, <laughs> you can't, you can't, you couldn't, you, you, you shouldn't have done that because I, I immediately went and looked. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. he, 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 he aged very well. Mm-hmm. Like a fine <laughs> wine. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Moving so, on. Been... <laughs> Doing well, but I've also, also last month, another note, which got me more wild time, uh, was uh, my car broke down. It went start. Mm-hmm. So I, so I called AAA. Called out for the day saying, hey, it might be a couple of days. There today and tomorrow I'm going to take off if I'm in a car for trouble. I'm just going to use PTO because, one, I got plenty of it. And two, I'm not sick. So, valid use. And technically I could have gotten like an Uber or something. So I was out, and because they it was a sensor, and they were having trouble getting the sensor, so it took a couple of days for that. By the time they had it done, they called me at like five minutes before they closed on Friday. Mm. But they were open till two the next day. Mm. So. Saturday, I got a lift, went there, picked up my car, and drove home. So I was out for four days, and then I worked one day, and then I was off for my weekend. Otherwise, it was the same old, same old. And I desperately need an alignment because if you haven't noticed, I made some pausing because I was gagging because of my teeth. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I haven't been keeping my teeth in as much lately because they're not fitting quite right. And until I can get back in, I'm going to have some issues. So if I muted talk and I move off the side of the screen for a little bit, I'm probably taking my teeth out for a little bit and muting myself. And then when I want to talk, I'll probably go off, put my teeth back in, <laughs> come back and talk. Was that okay. Demon? Sure. Um, let me get back to stuff. Sorry, I just I, I need a new water bottle because <laughs> that one keeps leaking. Anyway, um, holiday shows. Um, started a month. The men's chorus had their um annual holiday concert. Um, it was now my third official concert as the vice president of membership. So it's always a fun time but it's a little stressful just because of having to deal with um all of the little things as as vp of membership i have to do on top of you know learning all the music and singing and performing in a concert um so it was pretty good it was pretty good um the concert went well audience we had our highest attendance since the pandemic which is pretty amazing um and um it was a really great time, so I was really happy with everything that went went down. Um, 
the music was good. The, it, we got a lot of compliments from the audience about how amazing we sounded. So yay, all good. Um, fast forward to Christmas, and um, we, Jim and I, did our annual um, spending time with his family. Um, we went to his brother and sister law sister in law's house. Um, exchanged gifts, had some food, um, chilled and talked for a bit. Jim had a um, Santa gig, so we left a little early before we did. Normally, there's a we do a game like the family does a game, um, but we weren't able to do it because of the way timing went. Um, and he had the gig, and I had the jingle mingle. So, ha um, So that worked. And then Christmas was, um, Jim was not, weirdly enough, he woke up not feeling 100%. So we kept it a little low-key. He's fine. It was probably um, like, a, like a just shift in the temperature probably was what's affecting sinuses and all that stuff. So... Um, but he, we wanted to be sure we had gotten invited to friends to do a thing over at their place, but with him not feeling well, he didn't want to risk anything going wrong. So we just stayed home. Um, and since we both, well, he were, he was doing, um, his Winterfest, um, Santa show, um, during the month, most of the month of December. So, um, mm -hmm. that was also a good idea to kind of rest and relax, um, and that was a lot of the month of December. I didn't, I kept it very low key, but I will admit um, the holidays were kind of here, kind of eh, not a, not a bad feeling, but just sort of here we are, it's December, but it's, you know, it felt like it was just a month, which mm -hmm. normally the concert is my like jumping off point for the holidays. It was kind of my culmination for the holidays this time. So I felt, I knew, I felt once the concert kind of ended, I felt my energy and stuff sort of drag go down. So I'm thinking maybe a little sad seasonal affective disorder um, going on, but it's fine. I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, as it were. Uh, Gary, how about you? Um, I think that's fair. Like, you know, the fact that the weather's just changed mm -hmm. is starting to make it feel like winter. So, yeah. like, I really didn't feel December was December. Like, I didn't feel Christmas. New Year's yeah. was, eh, like... Did some, you know, interesting things around New Year's, but, you know, it just, I don't know. It's just, it just hasn't felt the same. Yeah. So, I think that's fair. Um, yeah. So a couple of things happened in the month of December. I think I might have briefly talked about this in what happened for November, um, but I have a new car. Ha ha. So long story short, uh, my car of many years died. And the expense of getting it fixed and not knowing when the next thing was going to happen was a lot. So I decided to get a new vehicle and tried some different ones. And now I have a new vehicle. So that's enjoyable, but uh -huh. nerve wracking. And I'm in debt. <laughs> I mean, I was in debt before, but now I'm in more debt, which I'm not happy about. So there's that. Um, speaking of New Year's, uh, I had a fun pre new year's eve outing with a best friend of mine who came to visit we went over to jamestown new york um which is the home right well a suburb of jamestown c leon is the home of lucille ball who some may know as considered the mother of star trek because desilu productions was the company that decided to take a chance on having star trek the tv series the tos originally air and footed the bill for not only the pilot, but the second pilot that made the show actually launch. Mm. Um, so she has a museum, Desilu Museum in uh, Jamestown that you can go visit and see, which was really nice. Um, and her daughter 
uh, is it has does a voice narration if you pay extra for the audio thing, which was really nice. So that was very enjoyable and highly insightful. And I really love that era of America and its history, like the 30s through the 60s and 70s for the most part. So I really, I really, really appreciated being able to do that. So we learned about her and Desi Arnaz and their like relationship. And I didn't know that they got divorced mm. later in life. Um, mm-hmm. I also didn't know that Desi Lu Productions, like their studio was like the largest studio in like Hollywood at one point and how many shows they made. Anyway, mm. so it was highly educational, very enjoyable. So that was good. And then we went to the National Comedy Center uh but did not have enough time to spend there. People warned me. I didn't pay attention. Um, I thought we could do it within a couple hours, but it's definitely an all day thing. So I look forward to going back and doing that. Um, and I also, for the first time ever did a float spa session. Ah, yes. I heard you mentioning this. So for those that don't know, a float spa, um, is where you are in a vessel that has water with, um, in this case, Epsom salt, 1200 pounds of Epsom salt, dissolved into water so much so that you float in the water like you can't really sink because it, the buoyancy like factor yeah physics and science yay so anyways um this place that we went to we uh, my best friend and i we did separate sessions and rooms side by side but we basically you go into which i don't know how else to explain this is like a deprivation pod mm-hmm. um so there was a black version and a white version. The black version's a little bit darker than the white version, but you can like turn the light off or leave the ambient light on. Um, you can have some meditation music if you want, which we both elected for. And we did half hour sessions. Um, so you just basically float <laughs> the way you came into the world for 30 minutes. Um, it was really fucking enjoyable. Um <laughs> And I just want to say that for the record, because we laughed about how when we went, we feel like we're people who know people who know people who know people that have done this. Like you never really know anyone that's done it. And there's always this conversation about how like some people are freaked out about the idea of like being with quiet with their own thoughts and like not having anything. So we didn't go 100 percent isolation, like with no sound. Um, so that was different, but I've okay. Like I've meditated on and off in my life, my adult life for probably 15, 20 years. So that's really all it was, was like a 30 minute meditation. Um, it was really enjoyable. Uh, you shower before you clean yourself off before you get in. That way you remove any like shampoos, lotions, oils, that kind of stuff. And then you do it again when you get out because, um, the salt salt. in the water will crystallize on you. So it's kind of like if you're in water that has a lot of chlorine, Mm. um, but not the same reaction, but a similar concept. So yeah. you take another shower after you get out and clean yourself off and stuff. And um, this place ha- also had an oxygen bar and an anti-gravity massage chair. Um, we didn't do those, but uh, yeah. So I highly endorse it. Look forward to it. We of us said we would absolutely do it again, possibly 60 minutes, because they do 30, 60, and 90-minute sessions. Mm. So um, unfortunately, we had to travel, which is the reason why we ended up going over to New York, because... Uh, there's no place locally that does it, although there is possibly a spa that's going to be bringing it this year. So I'm looking forward to this. But uh, yeah, I would definitely do it again. So I recommend that people, if they're interested in check it out or feel free to reach out to me if they have questions. Nice. That being said, uh, I'm going to have a busy 2024. And the reason why I say that is because um, I have for, a, for uh, a handful of years now. <laughs> Soon to be uh, five years next month will be my anniversary. I've worked with the company that is my second job. Um, To be fair, I worked with them full time for almost a full year. So, but I was kind of hoping in the near future ish that I wouldn't have to have two jobs, but the car is requiring that. So, Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm probably going to work a lot this year, which is okay. You know, I want to, be able to to feel comfortable with that um it works getting a little bit more challenging because my co-worker slash work wife uh decided to retire yes so it's just me pretty much doing 95 percent of the work now um oh, Lord. yeah so we'll see That's how that goes fun. yeah my supervisor we had a conversation last week they were like i don't want you to feel that you're being dumped on even though you are and you're not going to be abandoned to do it all by yourself. 
but you are um, <laughs> <laughs> for the first part. Well, because my boss doesn't know how to do the things that are the job. They've been overseeing other areas. And while they recently became our supervisor, that was like, what, the last two months of last year. So they got they didn't really have time to prepare to learn. So they're going to learn beside me. And I don't know everything like the the coworker that I had took care of a bunch of stuff on what we call the surveillance side. Um, and I was mostly prevention. So while I know some things, I don't really know that much. So I feel like I'm going to be relearning some stuff. So there's mm -hmm. that. So it's going to make for a busy year um, in terms of that. Uh, and I'm on the board for the local pride group. And we're already starting to prepare and discuss about what things that we're doing this year for um, the pride fest coming up and some other stuff. So I, uh, I expect this year to be busy. Indeed. Fun, fun, That's fun. That's kind of that, you know? Nothing super exciting. Oh, but I do want to give a quick shout out. Sorry. Um, apparently, there are some people who have been like listening to the podcast off and on and or consistently, but they're just letting me know that they've been listening. Um, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to like say anything, but you know who you are. Uh, so I'm just recognizing that you're out there and that uh you recently reached out to me and that we started chatting so you know that wasn't cryptic at all well i'm just saying like you know you never know like what our impact is and people that listen and you know what their takeaways and stuff are when you know you get a message that this isn't the exact wording but it's something like i've been listening for quite a while and blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like oh okay you know who you are well, I don't have their permission to say their name or their online name or anything, so I'm not going to do that to them. Understood. No. Yeah, we won't know unless you give us some. Good segue. Oh, for a transition. Good one. It was really good. Honestly, that was that was that was like that was like Crisco. Honestly, it was, it was honestly, slick. honestly, you served it up. Well, there you go. Anyways, Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, it's been kind of quiet over there compared to recent months where we seem to have a ton of like new followers and likes. Uh, we just have a couple of new likes and we very much appreciate them. Uh, we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us on Facebook. Carpenter Logan James. Jonathan Luca LaRosso and uh, Shafet Hassan. So thanks. We appreciate it. Welcome. Mr. Damon, what about YouTube? Um, we have a new subscriber on YouTube. Um, Paul, well, well, woo. Paul Rail, welcome. And mm -hmm. we actually got a comment um, on our COL 700, 709, which was our What's Going On for August of 2023. Um, Goody to Toad commented, said, I saw, I just saw my name tagged in this podcast. Y'all are invited to try the machine anytime. Bear and then um, winky face emoji. So I had to go back to episode 709 to see what this yes. was about and look it up. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was what I thought it was. So this was a Twitter pick that we had posted and uh, Toad was in this t-shirt looking very sly and seductively that says, uh, my body is a machine that turns dicks into sucked dicks. Yes. So we hereby have an invitation to try the machine. Yes, we do. And... And he joined the entourage. Yay! He did! Yeah. In, yes, he did. So if anybody's going to be traveling, uh, I don't think this is speaking out of turn. If they're going to be in the Georgia area, be on the lookout for a machine that, <laughs> 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 that will turn a dick into a suck dick. Just saying. Wow. I mean. And if you I... do get to experience the machine, let us know. <laughs> Maybe you can provide us some. Yeah. 
also provided some um, in our entourage chat. He also provided some very wonderful pictures. Yes, very good. Yeah, very much so. Uh huh. So you can peel our left ear if you join our entourage. But we can move on. Anyways, Gary, uh, what's been going on over at the Patreon? Uh, you know, just patrons being supportive of us. We very much want to thank and give out some big uh, bear cub hugs to our patrons. At the Cupster level, Charles W., Daniel C., and Michael K. At the Uber level, David T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S. And our buddies, Hadrian, Lloyd G., and Michael V. Thank so, you guys so much. Yay. Definitely. We appreciate you. I like how we have like three and a half Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> three and a half Michaels? Oh, yeah, because now one I of get them, it. stage name is <laughs> True, very true. It took me a moment to figure out what you were saying. I was like, what? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about our last month of shows. Um, for the last month, we had uh, four shows. Of course, the What's Going On for November, that was episode 720. Um, episode 721, we went back and uh, revisited the Let's Talking About subject of adulting. We called it LTA Adulting Redu. Um, because this of the audio issues. Audio and Damon. Yes, Damon joined the party, and we had a conversation about that. Um, so yeah, we did that. And then 722 was the 2023 look back where we talked about what happened over the course of the year because, it, you know, it's the year end kind of stuff. And then COL 723 was the Jingle Mingle 3 where I went and put some silly games together and we had patrons and guests of the show participate. And uh, I honestly thought it was fun. It was a um, good time. I enjoyed myself. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And uh, if I recall correctly, we actually got surprised by the outcome of one of the games um, in terms of who the, the naughtiest, who, who who ranks high in terms of naughty, I should say. Yes. Uh, but we also played a game called Good Elf or Bad Elf and a Holiday Most Likely 2023 version. So, yeah, we um, we had a good time. And a shout out to Joshua, who yet again is the angel Amongst all of us, <laughs> so pure and innocent. Despite having a show <laughs> called Demon Doctor. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> very true. But um, yeah, that was, it was good fun. It was enjoyable. Honestly, it was nice to do something kind of, um, I don't want to say off the cuff, but like just something different, you know, yeah. as opposed to a discussion of a topic like we just, show. Yeah. We, we need we to do those more. Chat. We could. We just have to figure out how to play them appropriately. <laughs> there we go. Well, oh, I forget. It's that time for for this. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's it's not even technically called Twitter. It's at twitter.com, but hey. So oh, mine, mine I call Sorry. Sneaky in the Shower. Mm. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not. And <laughs> it's one of those things where it's kind of a, a should I really be sharing this because of certain aspects, but Basically, somebody had a camera pointing at some public shower stalls. Well, shower heads. And then there's this, like, banister or something, which I think can, like, cover part of you from most angles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you've got these four guys, at least, <laughs> who are essentially jacking off back there and... Trying to sneak in a few sucks. Um, there's more than some it's, sneaking in some sucking is, in this. Yeah, there's some fucking too. 
Right, right. So there's about here's the interesting. Here's the interesting thing. Thirty I minutes say about of this. this. Jeff shares this on the platform, and I was like, first of all, Jeff's never really on here and hardly ever shares anything. So I felt compelled to watch it because I was like, wait, if Jeff shared it, like, what's what's up with this? And then I got worried that you got hacked. That like somebody went in and like hacked your account, but then I was like, why would they share this? Like, <laughs> like this is basically porn. No, so none you know, of these guys. Well, it I was you know, on my porn account. Right, right, right. And and it's not necessarily guys that are quite what I would consider my type. Yeah. And I have a wide range. But right, for some reason, this the situation and what they were doing mm -hmm. was intriguing to me. I was enthralled. I watched the whole 30-minute video. Right. Wow. So I will agree with Jeff with that. That This is like a very like enticing video of mm -hmm. public um, fun, I guess is the best way to phrase it. Yeah. We don't know where it is. It appears to be in a public building of some kind because it's it's a very interesting setup. There's multiple shower heads along one wall, and then there's like this barrister half wall that kind of blocks from the waist down. And then but in this, but it's an open space with urinals along the far wall, presumably some like some stalls. People come in and out all the time. The video is out of order. If you watch the whole thing, you kind of catch that there's a weird splice once or twice. So mm -hmm. it's like the beginning happens later and like the ending is not the real. Anyways, <laughs> I don't understand quite the whole thing, but I did watch it because I was like, wait, is this like <laughs> sneaky footage uh -huh. or is it not? Because it seems like intentionally there was like this hookup thing going on. Right. And yet it's in a space where you're like, okay, so is this a bathhouse? But yeah. it must not be because the people that are in the background, they kind of come and go a little bit. Like they're, they're wearing consistent clothing, like a uniform and not a uniform uniform, but like Navy blue and white are the two prominent colors, like okay. the t-shirts and or the shorts. So this says to me, this is probably armed forces mm. barracks but in another country yeah not the u.s it because... feels international yeah um now i will I say will... this there is one yeah. out of the four the chunky boy he's the one i paid the most attention to <laughs> shocker <laughs> like... shocked because one of them who i think is the camera guy is the most like trim of the bunch like i think it's his phone potentially that's being used that set up this whole thing and he's kind of the bigger whore um <laughs> he's not kind no, of that's he is. <laughs> he's, just, he's the I'm one just... that gets that gets dicked down so anyways yeah it's wild like and i was like what what is like i'm oh, trying okay. like but i know I'm... some people are disappointed that like one person said well that was a waste of the biggest waste of 30 minutes and i'm like well if you were looking for like full-on porn that's not exactly yeah. what this is. Like, this is yeah. kind of like sneaking and hookup culture this in is, a men's public space. This but, is very like voyeur ish in a yes, sense. This yes, is like, yes. um, I'm not, I, I was looking at some of it. I can't, I know it's, it's 30 minutes y'all. So just, you can't, I'm not, I'm not going to try to watch all of it in this. Damon will watch it later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I may not watch it later. I will probably like do it. What I was doing now, which is kind of like skimming through and skipping like, parts of it here and there um i get what gary's saying this feels international it doesn't and it doesn't feel produced if that makes sense this doesn't feel like this was intentionally made like a porn this feels like someone had their phone or a camera and they set it up and ca captured this moment well, and if like, you watch more of it, I feel like there's two phones. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I will say there's probably two at at both ends of this half yeah. wall, like so which is what's better, weird about the what I mean by the edit and stuff. When I'm looking at like the camera, I have like the pause I have on the video right now. I'm at like the seven minute, seven thirty eight minute mark. Um, um, we're on. 
this like left i'll call it, call it left because it feels left and you can see across the way there's another um like black something on the on the on the wall which is probably holding up the other camera i feel like mm. yeah i don't know yeah. it's it's difficult to gauge as to what the whole <laughs> scenario is but that being said I love how we're deep diving this thing. <laughs> that being said, it's been a long time, I think, since we've seen, especially this length mm -hmm. of a sort of found footage yeah. hookup video thing in a public space. Like, it's really yeah. specific in a way. And so I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if these, like, so I will say this. If someone was to tell me that this was all staged and planned, I'd believe it. It's just so not feeling that way yeah and the side of it that makes it not feel that way is the people randomly coming in and out of the background yeah otherwise i think a lot more people would be if, inclined to think that it was it, staged if it was staged and planned it was more of staged and planned of these four guys were planning hey let's go here right and let's like fuck around have some public fun we'll put right. two cameras I don't know. I just, I, I just thought it was intriguing, and I'm like, oh. it is. Yeah, like I mean, it's, it doesn't turn on, it turn into a full on orgy or anything, um, and maybe that's what some people were thinking it was going to be. I don't know. Like it's, it is definitely like it, it intrigued me so much. I was like, is there more of this? And not the thirty minutes, but like, is there more of like the person who filmed this like at other at the same place with other mm -hmm. people? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. It's a, it's a part of a whole thing that's going on. I found of late that there's a subculture of like people who are filming sauna slash shower stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and it goes back to the whole like you know consent is key. I'm not sure who all gave consent, but it also kind of seems to me that some of them may be aware that there's something recording them, but they're also not giving it away by looking at yeah the screen. Yeah. Anyways. This is weird. I'm going to have to, I may have to, I don't want to say necessarily deep dive, but I may look through it to kind of get <laughs> what I'm going. Like, I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be like, again, I don't think I'm going to be able to fully figure out all of this, but I do think. Okay. Portugal. Okay. If this, if bad boy three, six, one, five, who was the person who posted this, if this is the person that's in this video with one of the video, one of the four, no, he then posted the video from uh, someone named Morbo. Yeah. Okay. At Jesus, Jumping. The CCS eight, eight five. Uh, mm. I think they've got a uh, some sort of channel or something. Got it. Anyway. Oh, I need you to shut the fuck up. Um. Sorry, I went away and my. I have muted it, the video before and it's with muted now. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank I'm sorry. We didn't hear anything. Yeah. We got loud. So anyways, it was an interesting find, Jeff. Yeah. So I, at least I thank you for it because I it totally fed into my voyeur tendencies. <laughs> um, I guess it's my turn. Um, I have two. And I'll start with the first one. Um, the first one is from Cubby Peach, who I think I found recently. I've probably been following for a while, but he posted, um, it's, I called it this hot, hot meeting, but it's it says, what a hot time meeting this stud, and it's at Stoic Cub. Um, I've known Stoic Cub for a while. Um, they're a sexy bear. I will say that like they are super sexy and this picture I, I enjoy because um, Cubby Peach definitely has a beautiful Cubby Peach and this shows it for sure. It's a really great picture. Yeah. It's very cute. Yeah. Definitely taken with a mirror. Yes. Yes. They're definitely in a, It's a mirror mirror selfie or well not selfie but yeah you can tell because you can see the bottom of the mirror yeah that too but yeah just thought i'd share it i think it's well, cute and then you see the camera pointing at the picture so yes 
it was a hot hot meat cute that's fun um so that's my first one and then my second one is unwrapping um and it's uh, it's from um a familiar face and it says dad's got something for you to unwrap son um and it's our one of our favorite bear films porn actors uh, venice cub who is now um co bear 1812-7213 or 420 and fuck um uh and no it's 420 and for i i i said what i said um <laughs> And um, he's he's got a Santa hat on, and he's got these really cute, like I'm thinking this is Skull and Bones um, briefs in like a red and maybe green um, plaid pattern. But yeah, very nice to see, as always, giving us nice bulge, nice Santa. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Those are mine. Sorry. Fell down a Twitter hole. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Well, no, it's like you click on one thing and then it leads to another and you're like, next thing you know, you're watching porn. Anyways. Um, (laughs) So uh, the first one that I have is called Proud Switch. Um, And... I don't know what else to say other than this is a gorgeous fucking photo. Yes. Um, So this is at Beardiums. And they said proud switch and there's a lot more to come. Thank you at Harry dude zero two for all the photos you took. So this is from a a portrait like session or photo session, I should say. But it's a really great photo of them sitting um, wearing leather boots, gloves, jacket, black shirt um shaved head he's got his nose ring piercing a little bit of gray in the beard um the stool is almost non-existent to see because it's a black backdrop so it just i don't know there's something really powerful about this photo Mm. um so i just really wanted to give that a shout out because i was like damn like it's been a while since i've seen a good photo that i like really really enjoyed that being said um in addition to that i have a second pick Um, And I just wanted to give recognition to this because I did end up seeing this online last year. Um, And this one is called Top Scene 2023. And Icon Mail had this whole porn with a plot. Um, And I can't quite remember what it was called. I might be able to find it here in a second as I'm talking about it. But um, it was a scene or, yeah, I guess a scene or a series of scenes um, between Jesse a uh, stone in Cliff Boyd. And it's really intriguing because it plays on this whole like stepdad, you know, uh-huh. thing. Um, but the the whole thing behind it is that you have this younger guy who ends up um, that hooks up with the older guy who in his home is the father of the daughter who I think the young guy is engaged to or married. It's one of those things. I know, but anyways, the daddy who is this big white bearded, like Santa looking motherfucker um, is like a baker in the home. And so there's this whole thing with him, like, baking in the kitchen and like they end up kind of flirting with each other. And then the next thing, you know, like the daddy's got his dick out and they're fucking in the kitchen and the daughter is like, um, you know, sleeping or taking a nap. Oh, that's what it is. The dad ends up seeing the, the stepson or whatever about to have sex with his daughter. Only he like, kind of anyways all i want to say is it has been a while since i've seen like a 
a regular quote unquote like full professional porn studio use a big boy um in a scene Mm -hmm. and it was it was good that's all i'm gonna say and Um, considering it was top scene this is kind of cool right no and and it's just one of those things where i was like yay let's hear for representation because you know i'm not everyone has to be you know have a 12 pack and all that jazz because it's funny you go to like iconmail.com you're kind of like oh there you go no offense like just like i clicked over and i'm like oh yeah a lot of six-packy kind of right they have it they have a definitive look yeah um i just realized i'm not following cliff problem resolved um (laughs) yeah i just followed him here and on butterfly yes Oh, and oh, that's cute. So back on December 9th, he said, want to see a whole bunch more? Check out my main account and my other site. So then he has all these like um, shots of pictures. And amongst the nine, there is one where he's not alone. And guess who's in that shot? Daddy Hadrian. Yep. Yep, So there you go. Where is that? (laughs) Here, I'll put it in the chat. Um, So... This particular picture or post is Mm -hmm. from last month. And he said, like, if you want to see a bunch more, find me on my other sites. And then um, what's interesting is it's like a collage of nine images of him. And he's in all of them. But in only one of them is there another person. And uh, and that one happens to be Hadrian. Yeah. I've followed... um... I've been following Cliff for, for a while. Um, I actually met him at NAB last year. Briefly. It was just a quick, like, small conversation. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Oh, and then there's, apparently he did a scene with a bunch of other people in a cabin. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Cliff does, Cliff has been quite active. Um Quite, quite active. Well, shame on me for not following him sooner. Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. I'm no, scrolling back through his stuff yeah. now and seeing. Yeah. Um, that's funny. I've been in that bedroom. Um, anyway. <laughs> Moving right along. Oh, no, we can we can we can hang awkwardly on that comment. <laughs> Zadidu. Um yeah, no, he um I'm just I'm being a total perv now and scrolling back because I'm trying yes, to figure out when he and Hadrian don't, were together. Don't fall, but... into, don't fall into the hole. Um oh, that sounded wrong. Um That's okay, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> he would fall into a different hole. Oh or god. Meaning cliff. Mm. Anyways, <clears throat> Moving on into the links. Yes. Last minute uh, addition. Because one thing I didn't mention uh, in my what's going on is uh, I decided to try try making my own burgers and see how well I'm making them and how if they're they're eatable for myself. Mm-hmm. The answer is so far so good. Cool. But my first Yay. burgers that I made were meatloaf burgers hmm. where I basically made my meatloaf mix patified them and then served them to myself as burgers but I was like hmm. okay what are some good methods to have a good burger and I went to the resource that I always go to mythical kitchen so I reviewed their uh, Burger Myths episode, multiple flips one, bottomings is best, uh, toasted bun, uh-huh. and then they said just for like actual burgers, 70-30 is the better fat 
the meat ratio. So when you go to the grocery store, it's the 70-30, not the 80-20 or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's what they found on that. But then I'm like, huh, do they have any other tips? Well, they do have a five tips for making a good burger at home. Ah. In short, but short form. Which made me bring out the uh, uh, aluminum foil to wrap the burger. I think in there he only says to flip once, but in the Myth Munchers episode, they found out that it's better to flip multiple times. Uh-huh. I think they were on that multiple times. <clears throat> well, actually, I need to try doing regular burgers. Is that the beat Before I, I do it, because... The meat loafers are dense. Yeah. Because it didn't just have. Well, because where I got my stuff, I couldn't get ground pork. So I opted for the closest possible thing that's still porkish. And that was uh, an Italian, Italian sausage. Mm hmm. Which also mm. throws some things off because of like fat ratios. Uh huh. Right. So when I was doing my multiple flips, they looked very burnt. Although they were, it's more of like very myarded. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Maybe instead of burnt. But uh, <sighs> so I'm sharing my five tips for the best burger. Middle Kitchen YouTube short. So it's not long. Nice. Nice. <sighs> Gary? Uh, so from Disney Plus, they released What If Season 2 from Marvel Studios. Uh-huh. Their animated series of episodes that are basically taking concepts of like, what if this happened in the Marvel Universe? Um, uh-huh. But they're like, it's the multiverse saga concept yeah uh it was good like i liked the first season i really like the second season they they oh. kind of dove in on some aesthetics so like the very first episode is very much like blade runner it's like kind of a sort of an animated film noir thing Interesting. Um, where uh nebula went to the nova Corps. So, yeah, like it was and then there I don't want to give anything away, but like there there is sort of an underlying theme to some of the episodes that culminates in the in the end of the season. And there's already a season three. Nice. Apparently that's going to be coming nice. because for some reason, Marvel Studios sort of released a weird chunk preview of an episode from season three and said there is going to be a season three. No one's really sure what happened there, like because it's only the one episode of this like. I think it's like five or six minutes long. It's strange. I'm not sure what the story is, but <laughs> it's almost like they were desperate to make sure that people knew there was going to be a seven th- season three, but um, I really enjoyed it. And so I'm looking forward to it and it's fun because nice. who doesn't want to see zombie, witch, Scarlet, Witch? Mm. like that's fun. Oh, and they, um, they made the freak a reality. I think it's the name of it. So it's it's a, a alternate character that is not the Hulk, but it has the Hulk's blood. Mm. Um. So that's the whole mm. thing. Interesting. Anyways, yeah, I have to look it up. I'll have to look at it. It's been a, I well, oh, and I haven't seen a lot of the Mar- the recent Marvel stuff. I will own that. Yeah. So. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, they were. Um, they it was it was a good series, and they came out right around Christmas intentionally because there's sort of, well, there's one episode that's definitively about Christmas, but like, it sort of fits into the time frame. But mm. it was it was good. Neat. I enjoyed it. See, I, I I love those anthology series where they like do some sort of alternate thing. 
and it's just fun. <laughs> uh, one thing I didn't really like about season season one, it was okay. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they really could have done without the tying all of these episodes you just watched together. I, rather, I would have rather had them just do an anthology series. They don't have to be connected. Yeah. Well, it's sort of the... I, I don't, I don't think the yeah. what, I, what If comic book ever did that. It was the what, just, if what If this and here's a story. Of it. Yeah. Some of them were slightly connected off and on, but most of the time it was just like, for lack of a better phrase, one-offs. It was... What if this happened? It was sort of a retelling of a, or retaking an aspect and moving it um, into a different direction. Like the one that comes to, came to mind is what if Phoenix had not died, which is the one where that takes like the end of the Dark Phoenix saga where Jean Grey was um, um, killed herself. Mm-hmm. In, but um, it takes it in a different direction. But um, But a lot of them were, they, they were more like the what if question is like what if this happened as opposed to that um, and they were all meant to be sort of like alternate universe this actually happened this didn't happen in our main universe right. um, so the which one of the, what, yeah which is what they basically did did here like the Captain Carter one was, yeah what if he, it, Rogers what if Captain Carter got yeah. Super shoulder serums instead of. Yeah. Uh, and Steve Rogers. And it. That's kind of how, if I'm remembering season one correctly, that's how the beginning of it sort of worked. But like you said, there's this other like thread that was connecting them all. And yeah, and then then the watcher basically somebody somebody's breaking down the multiverse. So I'm going to grab all these people from the previous episodes and we're going to have like an Avengers moment. Yeah. And, An alternate and I really could have done without that. Just, just, just leave them as anthology series. I think, uh, right. I, I think they were trying to have fun with the concept um, mm-hmm. to show that there, there are alternatives, which is what the whole premise of the show is. So yeah. I, I, I think it was a good shot. Like, I mean, if anything, they could have, if they just called that an experiment and then didn't do it again, because it was like, eh, it wasn't as good as we thought it would be, or uh-huh. uh, it's better just to stick with this. Then yeah. that I'm okay with. I mean, I'm not going to say don't just drop it off. It's just, I would have preferred they'd done this instead. That's it. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So uh, I definitely, I definitely liked it, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, they introduced a whole new character, Cohorti. Um, I would love to see that character like in other stuff, uh, not just this little series. Right. Um, but, anyways, that's, that's all. Yeah. All right. I mean, that that's the end. Yay. Or oh, or I don't know how you feel. I'm not you. Play ways to contact us. Uh, provide us some feedback. I know I'm not going to play the clip again. You can do that at CubsOutLive.com. That's uh, where we have our blog and comment there. Give us an email at CubsOutLive at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. Please, please give us a jingle. There's a reason why I'm saying that, by the way. Um, you can go to Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL. Uh, you can also join our Entourage chat, just like Goody Tito did. At bit.ly slash telegram dash col, you can also find out when we're planning on recording these shows by subscribing to our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements at Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. 
some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. It helps us keep the lights on. You can also find us on all the podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, that sort of thing. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box, Text Box, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. You can also find me as pup umbra79 on Blue Sky. Or now you can find me as um, DMA Gamer79 on TikTok. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73, um, which is actually the only profile I have at the moment on Blue Sky. Uh, if you want to see the stuff that I enjoy, that's like our picks, um, the naughty stuff, that's Gabber73XXX. Mm-hmm. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.